The seaweed is always greener in somebody else's lake as we find ourselves here on Data Sea. And the fishes are uh, indeed having a buzzing time swimming around these uh, pillars. We have Scarlet versus Petit Drogo, a best of three. The first two links of Scarlet tried to make their way across the map. It was a little bit of a hatch block in the early game, but not too much else happening. So I figure we might as well just skip that part. It's not too interesting. Stargate is already on the way here as Drogo is an extremely standard player. While Scarlet tends to be a player that's, well, a little bit more out there. Uh, doesn't mind uh, going for those more aggressive options as well. You often see that. Drogo is going to try and get a worker kill. Instead is going to get a Ling. But one Ling is better than no Lings. And that's actually true. So I guess this was worth it here for Drogo. Chrono Boost is a single adept. Second adept is out as well. And third unit is not quite on the way. Second gateway will instead be built as we see the first Oracle now popping. Oh, where's this Oracle oh, actually? Aimed towards, towards the third base. Okay, so it's going to defend the third base. And not the, the dumbest play. I'll just have to say that. This is a pretty okay play. I like this even. Out of Petit Drogo. Saying, hey, I only have two adepts. It's not a whole lot of adapts. If a couple of links make their way towards my third base, how am I going to defend that? It's not going to be possible. And thus the Oracle just kind of parks himself over this Nexus. Fort Pylon should also be uh, thrown down here pretty soon from this point on out. As a... Uh, just a little bit of a... Uh, a, a cave. I'm not quite sure if it's a cave. It's like some mineral backup, basically. It can only be attacked by two links, I think, over here. So very safe adept at this point. If he's going to go down, he's going to take a couple of links with him at least. Fast Evo Chamber, so it's a plus one. And this is pretty much the, the Scarlet special. Scarlet loves to build these fast plus one upgrades. Now, it does cost you in the early game a fair amount. That means if any drones go down, like we see happen right now. Ooh, Drogo, be careful! Can't go around losing oracles. Three workers get taken out. And two drones survive with uh, half HP each. So not the greatest target fire. But it will do the trick for now. We see a third order as well as a forge, a twilight, and a robotics facility on the way. The forge and the twilight are not uncommon. The robotics facility is something that we are not seeing as much anymore these days. And the reason for that is because a lot of Protoss players have kind of deferred to what we call the hero style. They'll play uh, four gas with lots of blink stalkers. And eventually maybe go up to extra gases. It doesn't require a quick robotics facility whatsoever. But we do see Drogo... Up just for that. Plus one. And charge. Okay, this is very different. This is a little bit more old school, I would say. And it is something that Zerg players feel very comfortable against often. You're gonna get quick six gases with a build order like this. We'll have to wait and see exactly what Drogo's plans are here though. Like what is he actually going to be doing with this? That's the that's the real uh hundred dollar question. Thousand dollar question? The million dollar question. That's the million dollar question. I see a Templar Archives. Wouldn't mind seeing a couple of Zealot Warpens here as well. This type of build order. You get like some Zealots, maybe an Observer out. Okay, we have the Observer. Immortal. Ooh, this reminds me a lot of a build that Neep showed me. When I was boot camping together with Neep and Scarlet in the Shopify Rebellion headquarters. Over in Canada. Neep said, hey, Kev. You just get four gates initially. And then you get an Immortal. You get a bunch of units out, then you move across the map with two Archons. You get a pretty decent push out on the map, you get it pretty fast as well. The problem, however, is that in order to do that, you need constant warp-ins out of the four gates. So when you get the four gates, you warp in four zealots, then your next warp -in is going to be uh, four Templar, you morph those into Archons, and you move across the map with that. Behind that, you get a fourth base. It hits before Mutas are out, so you can force out some important units, whether the, those are going to be um, well, uh, Ravagers or more roaches doesn't really matter this is a good run by by the way taking out a lot of these gate units will also manage to snipe this probe and thus the the third next is going to get delayed scarlet's building a lot of units i'm not a huge fan of that against this style though you don't need that many links to fight this actually you don't need any links to fight this what you do need is a lot of drones you're gonna need to go up to 80 ish 84 85 Maybe even 86 drones here. Fast 5th base as well. This 5th base should have already started. And Drogo right now is going to be pretty happy with this. He sees, um, or he saw, a pretty close to an empty 4th base. No extra gases there yet. He's not going to be afraid of Mura too much. Storm is going to finish up. Plus 1 has already finished up. And I mean, this is a full wall here with 3 gateways, a cannon behind it. What 
is Scarlet going to do at this point? Spore isn't done yet. Triple Oracle is flying in. That means some of these drones most likely are going to end up falling. Drogo with okayish target fire is going to get a revelation as well on those queens. We see a prison making its way over as well. This is a fantastic build, honestly, against anything that isn't Mutalisk. This is so powerful. You get an insanely good timing with plus two, with Storm, with a bunch of Archons out as well. You have a lot of control on the map with these Oracles. The problem is often against Mutalisk because you're investing so much in tech early on into these very heavy gas units that you just don't have that much supply. So uh, like a 14 Mutalisk into... A Ravager Ling Bane is tricky because your main defense comes from the Oracles or even something along the lines of just mass, mass Muta because you rush into Storm so quickly and Storm is god-awful against Mutas because their regeneration is so high. Scarlet is building seven Overlords despite only needing two extra supply. So that's a waste of money. Or she's planning on flying in a couple of Overlords as bait for whatever reason. Not quite sure why you would do that, but... I mean, it is allowed, of course. It is completely allowed. Roaches will take out these rocks. We see the supply for Scarlet is actually kind of low. Might be setting up for some type of attack. We have a potential baning drop here on the top side. We saw... Yep, there we go. Oh, no, it's going to be here, actually. These overlords are already a little bit damaged, though. Eight links make their way over. We'll probably... Or should already probably be morphing into bane links at this point. Scarlet's still only on 78 workers. There's no hive inside either. Scarlet feels like she's kind of on a timer. And it also feels like Drogo could be attacking anytime soon. We could have kind of this, this funky scenario in which Drogo decides to attack into an all-in. Because let's face it, Scarlet right now is extremely all-in and needs to trade. Big Storm hitting a lot of these links. We have Bane links running by. Can we get a good split on these Banes? The answer is no, not really. Then probes are going to get taken out. That pylon will also die, but... This was not enough damage for the amount of banings that were there. Now double overlords are heading towards the correct locations. Into this fort base and in towards the natural. The problem I have with Scarlet's position is that she has 12 drones too little. If she had 12 extra drones, right now she would probably still be maxed. But instead of that, she's pretty darn close to dying as Drogo moves across the map. A couple of extra banings are being morphed in right now. Here come the drops. Uh, are they being microed? Well, it, not really, but neither is Drogo microing here. So... This could actually be pretty close. We still have another drop heading towards the natural, I hope. No, it's just idling over here right now. 51 workers for Drogo. Scarlet is going to sacrifice all of her queens. No, besides instead it might be better to keep all of these queens with the many, many transfusions that they have alive. Here comes another Overlord drop. Is going to connect with a lot of these workers. And this definitely is being micro. to control her out of Scarlet. 27 probes go down. The question now is, are there enough Bane links to defend this? 10 more Banes are being morphed in. Three Ravagers are out. There's a lot of transfuse energy available. But there's... So many freaking Archons, honestly. 12 Templar. Um, 8 Templar. And I think there's still 5, 6, maybe 7 Storms available. Storm is going to hit a big chunk of this army. 15 drones have gone down. No extra probes are dying right now. And despite Scarlet killing a lot of workers... I'm not so sure if she's actually winning. Ooh, Drogo actually moving too far forward there with some of these Archons. is going to lose a lot of the, uh, these Archons. Good target fire on the Roaches. Or by the Roaches on these Archons. However, I'm not quite sure if this is going to be enough. GG gets called and Drogo wins this game. Scarlet perhaps a bit too over eager there in the very end. Four Immortals stay alive. Two Archons manage to hold the fort as well. Plus two, plus one was done. But uh, Drogo's army just a bit too strong. I think a lot of that can be contributed to that too low of a drone count for Scarlet and that initial bailing run by that just didn't quite do. And if you don't quite deal enough damage, there's often only one thing you can do. And that is to tap out of the game. And get into the next one. That's exactly what Scarlet did here. As we are on Cosmic Sapphire. Drogo opening up with a final on the low ground. And a quick scout making its way across the map. This is a very small map. I'm not even sure if you need to send a second probe in order to block, honestly. This is such a tiny, teeny map. Well, it's not... Actually, it's not that small. It just feels very small. All maps, honestly, feel very small. Okay, you definitely need to send this probe. It's going to arrive way later than I thought it would. I cancel everything that I said before. Scarlet's going to send out the drone. Realize that, indeed, there is a probe blocking that natural base. And we'll take it on the third instead at 17 supply. This is the golden standard in PvZ, or in Zerg versus Protoss, if Protoss is blocking your natural. This is a fact. You cannot debate with me about that. This definitely is a golden standard. The 17 hatch on the third base location. Now we'll have to wait and see what Drogo is going to do from this point on. 
Is he going to send three workers into gas? Is he going to send seven workers into gas? That would be a mistake. Is he going to send his entire worker count to a single mineral patch because he's so busy microing these workers? Sometimes it happens you accidentally double click and then you click on one of the minerals because you're a pro gamer and you want to look very fast. I do this quite often. Every now and again in a ladder game it happens. Like once every hundred or so. And I think once every like 250 tournament games where you're not completely paying attention. It's the worst feeling in the world, let me tell you that much. Especially if you know you're being broadcast. You just hope that the audience didn't see it because you feel pathetic. You lose legit like 60 minerals in one click. Just wanna, just wanna quit the game most of the time. It's even worse if you like accidentally put the pile in a position where it blocks your nexus. I remember there was a really famous game on, I wanna say it was Met Metalopolis in Wings of Liberty. It might have been a BlizzCon or a GSL, in which Genius, the Protoss player, very good Protoss player in the early stages of StarCraft 2, he blocked his own nexus with a pylon on Metalopolis. And let me tell you, the third base was not easy to take, and he was playing against Zerg. Yeah, that was pain. It also happened uh, to me a couple of times. Often you try to transition out with a 4-gate. Well, transition out. Try to all in with four gates. I think Genius actually built a gateway on his natural expansion, pretending that it was a Nexus. It's a very bold move, and I can't actually recall if it worked out or not. If you know what game I'm talking about, please tell me about it in the comments. I think it was Genius on Metalopolis. I want to say that's the case. I haven't thought about Genius in years, honestly. Very wild Protoss player. It's just... Yeah. Interesting fella. Very aggressive. Most DOS players in the early stage, actually everyone was aggressive. Like literally every single player was bailing, busting and link flooding and doing other shenanigans. It was, oh, it was a sight to behold. Adept is going to move in. We'll try to get a kill. No, instead we'll force a spore. Take a little bit of damage as well on this Adept. Drogo once again with a very similar opener here. We'll manage to, uh, at least force a spore and force one drone to pull off as well. So, honestly, an okay start. Ooh, is this a single gate third base? Drogo, Drogo, Drogo. Oi, 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 oi. That is really spicy. That actually is rather spicy. I'm a huge fan of that. Throw it on the Nexus, buddy. Just throw it out. You got a pylon as well over here? Yeah, we definitely can. Ooh, beautiful stuff. Woo! I love it. I love it. That's a very fast Nexus. And it's really safe as well. Now, the reason why you can play that on this map is because you have this little wall over here consisting of a gate and a cyber that completely walls it. It's a, a seven hex wall. Well, usually you're working with 10 hexes or nine hexes. Most maps actually have nine. In that case, you require three big buildings to wall, three three by three buildings. You often see uh, the second gateway going into the wall, but yeah, if it's a map like this, look at the timing. Uh, of everything there. beautiful stuff. I can say the timing of the gas. Yeah, it feels very quick. Pilot counts are also pretty quick. Third Oracle on the way. 14 drones being produced? Excuse me. That is not okay, is it? Oh, what is this? We have a road warrant on the way. We have overlord speed as well. We have extra gases coming down. This is not an odd timing for extra gases, by the way. This is a normal timing for extra gases. Can I just say that? But there's no Evo Chamber, and that already kind of... That scares me. Six Overlords? Okay, this is either the, the worst macro in the world, or Scarlet is all inning. Like, uh, we're, we're talking German Taxi here. German Taxi, of course, you put four... Is it six? I can never recall. I think it might actually be six Queens. Put six Queens and Overlords. Move your roach across the map. Here come seven roaches. Two spores being built as well right now. One in each base that didn't have one yet. You already have a spore here in the natural. Which is the third base. Let's not forget about that. Natural base location, but it is the third. Drogo is relatively blind, is he? Is he? Dark Shrine is being built, though. I mean, this is a clean win, isn't it? This is a dream scenario here for Drogo. He's going to full wall the natural cannon battery. I'm not entirely sure if that's the correct call. He has no gate units either. I mean, you need this immortal to at least join the fight, no? There's no gate units. He has no units whatsoever. Okay, double stalkers being warped in. Three stalkers being warped in. I think he needs more stuff. He actually needs more stuff. I wouldn't mind a cancel on the plus one either. It's gonna need more cannons here. 
Without cannons, you just don't have enough damage output. Yeah, this cannon is going to be too late. Way too late, even. Here come the links. Oracles can get activated. Super battery in the far back. No, it's actually not in the far back. It's actually relatively far in the front. Creep is going to get pooped. Biles are going to be landed here. As all of these stalkers are going to get surrounded as well. Pylon will force this immortal to stay in the natural. And I think that this is actually just game. This is enough damage. Oh, there's DTs! There's DTs! Overseer is being built right now. Oh, these triple DTs actually dealing a lot of damage very rapidly as well. Need to, oh, need to be microed. Need to be microed back home. Now this pine is going to get taken out. Immortal is going to join up as well. There's still only a single Oracle remaining though. Archon is morphing in right now and Scarl is paying attention. She says, hey, I think I can take that Archon down with a couple of bows. With these links as well, just right clicking that Archon before it really finishes. Only gets two shots off. Immortal gets surrounded as well and now... It truly is GG. GG gets called. Scarlet wins game number two with the German taxi and ties up the score one to one. And our final game is going to be played here on Moondance. As Drogo, he is a, a man that likes to do the same thing ma many times in a row. You know, he uh, walks into the McDonald's and gets the, the Happy Meal every time. Walks into the Burger King, get the, the regular Whopper menu with a medium Coke. No sauces except for ketchup. None of that garlic or barbecue crap. No. He's a man of uh, of one thing, and that is routine. He loves his routines. He loves doing the same thing again and again, and slightly improving on that same thing again and again and again. He is a Zerg player that accidentally picked Protoss when he grew up. And that is fine. That's completely fine. He's very good at what he does. He's a very skilled player. And... One of the things that I'm always very impressed by is the decision making that he has when it comes to when to attack. Uh, most of his defenses are rather well thought out. I don't think that was the case last game though. I don't think that, def that defense was well thought out. Because if that defense is well thought out, you want to get the cannons first. You want to get the batteries a little bit later because they're further in the back. You already have one battery majority of the time anyway, and that can deal with the initial hits on the cannons. Cannons are absolutely vital. Getting a full wall in the natural is not necessary either on a map like Cosmic Sapphire. It just simply isn't. There were no stasis wards being produced. Um, I'm not even sure if there was a secondary pylon for the main battery uh, field. If you can, can you call that a battery field? Like three batteries or so? This is a great map, by the way. This map also only has a uh, double wall or a, a double big building wall. So this is one of the two maps, Cosmic Sapphire as well as Moondance, where you can do this. Single single gate third bases are, well, could be common. I'm not saying they are common, they could be common. And I think that could be common is something I'm a fan of. All right, what are we looking at here? Petit Drogo, show me what your plans are. I'm expecting an adept Ooh, it's a stalker. He switches it up, and I like that. You know what, Scarlet? Scarlet is, is is someone that likes to abuse patterns. She looks at it and says, "Okay, that's going to be an adapt. I might already start flying in with the overlord. I might already want to see what your tech is, buddy. I can figure it out." But Scarlet this time is playing it safe. It's keeping the overlord uh, at flying distance from safety. Is that the case? Actually, I say that. I say that if Drogo controls this correctly, will this Overlord die? It's going to be rather close. One more shot from here. Oh! Link's gonna have to move in. Okay. Drogo lost focus. Otherwise, he would have gotten it, wouldn't he? If Drogo had continued chasing, he would have gotten it. This is a... Wait. Let's see. Okay, now this was a... A warp gate after Stalker still. But it's a single unit. Third base. I love this build order. I'm a huge fan of this build order. This is, this is, this is greedy, okay? This is the type of build that the word greedy was invented for. Oh, I love it. So much money here for Drogo. He's gonna be so darn rich. Scarlet is going to scout it pretty quickly though, and that is annoying for Petit Drogo. Scarlet will know what's kicking off. And the beauty of a, of a build like this is that your opponent, if they don't scout that there's a third base, they don't know if you're on two base or not. You could be on three, you could be on two. What you gonna do about it, buddy? You're gonna sacrifice an Overlord? Yeah, you have to. If you open with, an with a Void Ray and then you take this base, that is a very high tier build, let me tell you that much. In tournaments, that's a high tier build. I like that. I really do like that. I'd recommend that even. And I don't recommend a lot of things. I am very, how would you, how would you call it? I'm, I'm careful with my recommendations. Some people just vouch for anything, you know? 
they'll watch a movie like uh, the the life of Doctor Strange, and they say that's I vouch for that movie, Kevin. If you vouch for Doctor Strange, and I watched it on your recommendation, you're blocked, and not just on WhatsApp and your phone number. No, even on the Battle.net app. I'm not responding to your crap anymore. You can't vouch for a movie that bad and expect me not to, you know, not to go for it. But I vouch for this build. This is a big recommendation, okay? This is something I would... Yeah, I I, 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 I put a bit, yeah, big vouch for this, big vouch. I'm expecting, like, if you don't like this build, after I vouch for it, then I don't want to be friends with you anymore. I'm turning it around on you. That's how I roll. Ooh, look at that spore positioning. Kind of cute. Kind of cute. It's really cute. Also, bad, I think. This also is weird and seemingly bad spore position. But if Scarlet likes it, then, you know, I'm, I'm game. I'm, I'm, I'm here to like it as well, I guess. She thinks about this type of stuff, you know? It's like where to put the spores and... She moves it around a bit. Most people don't think about stuff. She definitely does. Yeah, creeps being spread quickly. Oh, we have Roach on the way. I have not been paying attention whatsoever to this game. My apologies. Oh, this is the Queen Walk. This time without the Overlord Speed. Is there Overlord Speed? No, there's no Overlord Speed. Is there a lair? There is a lair. Oh, this is going to be off creep. This seems like a terrible idea. How will this work? This is a build I do not vouch for. This sounds garbage. There is a full wall. You can full wall this right now, Drogo. Yeah, Archon? Okay, one Archon. I dig it. Maybe. That should be a Cybercore. It should be a Cybercore. Should have been a Cybercore. Because it builds faster. It has more HP. And thus it gains more HP per second than a Gateway does. This is a mistake, Drogo. This is a mistake. But nothing is lost yet. But... It might be soon. There's a lot of money in the bank right now for Drogo. Don't think you can quite hold that while floating 800 minerals. A couple of links dying against that bio. Archons in the far back. Um, not really contributing in the fight yet. Immortals go to pop out of the wrong right side. I'm not quite sure if it is the wrong or the right side. Oh my god, it's a difficult situation though here for Drogo. There's a lot of queens. Like five? No, that's eight. That obviously isn't five queens. It I'm not great at counting, but even I figured, should have been capable of figuring that out. Plus, one's about to finish up. We have a bunch of zealots on the way right now. I think Drogo is going to survive. Is he going to survive with his nexus intact? I don't know. That's going to depend on the next few minutes. Uh, we have a decent gateway count. We have seven gates. We have plus one done. Charge is done. If this nexus survives and no more probes die, Drogo is in a fantastic position to just straight up counter attack and win the game. I like this warping in the main base, but I wouldn't have minded a couple of zealots here in the natural. This nexus is going to die. Despite that nexus dying, do I still like the position of Drogo? The answer now turned into no. And the reason for that is because this robotics facility died. If the robo doesn't die, a prism could be built at any time and Drogo can move across the map. He can harass with Archons. He can just literally do whatever with this army. And he can reinforce it. He has very good production. He has seven gateways. He has plus one. He has these high value assets in the Archons, in the Immortals. Imagine if a Prism was flying behind this army right now. You have these two Archons moving in. And then boom, next warp in. Seven Zealots. Scarlet's freaking dead, my friends. There's no Queens here. There's like some slow Roaches because Glyol Reconstitution hasn't even started yet. There's no Evo Chamber. Scarlet's now getting ten drones because she no so there's not going to be any type of follow-up attack. It is simply not possible here for Drogo. Drogo's going to get plus two. I'd like to see a fort base immediately here. He is getting that fort base. Ooh, that's in vision, isn't it? That is in vision, and that is... <sighs> that's going to please Star uh, Scarlet. She's going to be very happy to see that. I like the fort base, but I would have much preferred it to be hidden. Because now Scarlet knows, hey, I can go seven gas. I can build drones and mutas. I can get a fifth base. Drones, Muras, Drones, Muras, Lynx, Muras, Drones, Muras. Bang, bang, bang. You're dead. That's how it is sometimes. A single Mura is being constructed to start with. There's a little bit of a supply block. Nine Overlords on the way. Happens to the best, of course. Uh, that's actually not that bad because these two bad boys are going to get taken out as well. Wow, four more Overlords at this point. Might be a bit much. Six more Mutalists coming in as well. We see the Ravagers moving forward off of Creep. The correct call. Now, why is this the correct call? Because you want to make use of that bio cooldown as much as possible. You're not going to get caught by an army without any zealots in it. So it's a risk-free endeavor. 
and risk-free endeavors we should always take. If something has no risk, then why would you not go for it? Makes no sense. These meters are being hidden, by the way. Although it's only seven. Ooh, Scarlet Roach Maxine behind this. I think she might be. I just think she might be. <laughs> Phoenix is looking for something. Where's your uh, your mutalisk? I know you have him. But where art thou? Mutalisk. Things move towards the right side. Ravagers, can they break up this ramp? Meh. That means no in French. So there's a lot of uh, Archons Immortals. Phoenixes are still alive. We'll need to go in towards the natural right now. I like this battery. This is a battery from the initial defense. Super battery gets activated. I do not like this because you need it over here. You need it in the forward defense. A bunch of these workers might get taken out. Phoenixes try to take out these Mutalisks, but it's going to take a while here. Stalker's not really helping out either in the fight. Look at the split of these Mutas. Single Muta is just taking out worker after worker after worker. At the same time, Roaches and Ravagers are kiting these units without a super battery here and without a lot of workers. Drogo, ooh, he's gonna stand in a lot of these piles. He's dead. He just died accidentally. Oh no. Sometimes just happens. Muras come in, kill 11 workers. They take away a lot of your attention. You pop a super battery in the natural while you don't really need it. And bang, just like that, you're dead. You're absolutely dead at this point, Drogo. 60 more roaches on the way, 6 more ravagers being constructed as well. Drogo has a lot of stalkers, which are generally a bad unit in this type of scenario. You want a lot of charge lots. You want some, some storm maybe as well. I think we already have storm. Yeah, we do. You also need some fellers that can, you know, that pull out the storm. That's good force food, though. Mm. Thanks a couple of these biles and makes life a little bit less good again. 30 mortals being chrono boosted out, out of this uh, robotics facility. Would it, mm, my god, the control here has not been brilliant. Force fields, though, have been pretty brilliant. That's a lot of Ravagers uh, that are going to get taken out. Salas will continue chasing these links. Uh, Petit Drogo is holding on. Uh, but for how much longer is the question. There's triple Immortal. There's no super battery available either. As long as these Immortals stay alive, there might potentially be a chance. And the moment these Immortals die, and there's no chance no more. Centers are going to start falling as well. Piles once again landing. Super battery still a little bit away and just not available currently. That's an issue. Super battery here would be fantastic. At the same time, though, Scarlet out mining Drogo by about 1400 minerals per minute. G gets called, and Scarlet wins game number three. And with that game number three, also wins the series two to one. That's going to be it for me today. Thanks all so much for watching. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see all of you next time for a new video. Thanks for watching, and bye-bye.